felt that I was a little bit more mature. You know, I was a little bit, uh, what's the word? You, more mature? More mature, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, but I feel like, yeah, at the age of 23, that, um, yeah, there's something about that number that makes sense as far as, you're, you're in that weird zone where you're transitioning, you know what I mean? Well, not if you ask the PhD Mark, uh, Mark Hoppus from Blink-182, because he had that one song, Nobody <laughs> Likes You When You're 23. Yeah, Remember uh, that? Yeah, you love them. Yeah, I do. It's one of my favorite bands. Uh, number eight. Number eight. N- number eight. Nah, man, that wasn't sexy enough. Number eight. All right, it says, in the last 50 years, the number of people living together without being married has increased by 900%. Holy hell, people are getting smart. Basically saying, we ain't getting married, and we ain't signed no prenups because you know there ain't no need for them. We ain't my, ever get married. My cousin does is doing that. Like, is she, She's been with the same guy. Oh, it's a chick. Yeah, she's probably at this, uh, she's probably 32 now. She's maybe a year or two older than me. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, she, she started dating the same dude when she was 18. Let's say 19 for the sake of a number. And she's been with him. Yeah, Was she really that young? Yeah, and she's got a baby's daddy. And they're no longer, I don't know, I don't, at this point, I don't know what the relationship is there. Maybe he's just child support, he sees her, whatever. But she's not with the baby daddy anymore. She's with this new guy. Wow. And since the age of 18 to uh, 33, uh-huh. yeah, they've been together. And they're not married. Ooh. They're perfectly content. He, I think he wants to get married. Does he wants to get yeah. married? But she's like, why? This is a good thing. You know, things are good. You think, you think she's getting some on the side? No. You don't think so? No, but I'm pretty sure they're both. Um, they're, they're okay with kind of doing what they're doing, not being married. And, I wonder why he wants to get married and she don't, though. It's normally the other way around. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, if, if it ain't broken, don't go trying to change it, you know, fix and it. He sounds like one of those romantic types and whatnot. Mm. Yeah. Definitely ain't, that definitely ain't us, though, right, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. how, many, how many more can we get through? I see we're running short on time here. Yeah, we're probably only going to make it to 10, dude. So uh, that'll give us, like, 28 more to come back to at some <laughs> point. So uh, number nine. Two-thirds of all couples married in 2012 had already lived together for two or more years before they had made the jump. Okay, so they lived together for two years as a couple before they got married. If I read that right. Uh, Number 10, and this is probably our last one for the night, uh, for this segment, rather. It says, uh, barely a quarter of all Americans actually disapprove of couples living together without being married. In 1981, that disapproval number was at 45%. Wait, so what is that saying? More people? Uh, hang on, read, read it back to me a little bit slower. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I, actually, I didn't. I, I could read it really good, but I, I, didn't quite, <laughs> I didn't quite grasp it. It says, barely a quarter of all Americans actually disapprove of couples living together without being married. So I okay. think it's saying more people agree with. Okay, no, okay, so now it's saying back, okay, so back in 1981, more people were against, it was almost exactly. half people were against people being living, uh, being together without being married, but now it's like, who cares? Yeah. So only a quarter of the people now, nowadays. And it's crazy, I mean, we're in 2017, imagine what it's going to be like two, three, four years from now. Well, John, I think whenever you end up popping out some little puppies, and you have yourself a little, a little girl and a, and a little boy. Hey, now, let me go ahead and uh, wrap this up. <laughs> uh, go, go, go ahead. What were you saying? I think that, uh, you know, who knows, man? Maybe, I don't know, but it might be a different world. You may never have a, a what do they call it? Not a godson. What is it? Like a son-in-law. You'll ne- you may never have a son-in-law or a son uh, or daughter-in-law. I was going to say daughter-in-law. Son- whatever. Yeah. I can't talk. Whatever. That wraps up this segment. So uh, we'll come back and, and hit you guys with more 38 uh, tips if you're trying to find love in America at some other point. Here we go. Stick around. We'll be right back. If you're into Selena Gomez, can't keep my hands to myself. Or Adele. Hello. Then we might not be your first pick. Don't say we didn't warn you. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Skull and Bone Show. Welcome back to Skull Moans Radio. Alright, we got a situation. I'm the sweetest bitch you'll ever meet. <laughs> After I have sex with a guy, I will rip their heads off. Alright, Mick. You know what that means, right? <laughs> GTL, GTL, GTL. Now, for you people who don't know what GTL means, oh baby, hit him, hit him with your best shot. 
It's uh, Jim Tan and laundry, laundry baby. Ba- laundry baby. Something I never do. <laughs> all right, man. So here's the deal. I don't know if you caught uh, wind of this or if you know what's going on. Uh-uh. First of all, Skull and Bones Radio. This is our. Uh, what do we call this segment? Pirate news. Yeah, there you go. Pirate news, baby. So this week's edition of Pirate News is brought to you by our sponsor is. Apparently, Red Hot Chili Peppers will be jamming their tune. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, the uh, the big news that broke uh, not so long ago was that uh, Jersey Shore... Well, that's what I was supposed to say. <laughs> is, yeah, they're, they're set for uh, a, re- a reunion show Get that kicks here. off in August. Exactly. <laughs> so, the gang from Jersey Shore is back together on TV, no uh, but apparently there is no craziness. What? So, well, hold on. Wait, hold on. That makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, here's what I got here, what I gathered. Uh, production sources tell us that uh, the cable network uh, will showcase the current versions of Snooky, JWoww, Polly D, D, the Snituation. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, they call him the Snitch at the end. <laughs> uh, and Dina for a special on uh, the impact of the reality show of their lives and where they are now. Hold on, they're bringing back Dina. She she got kicked off in like the first couple seasons, didn't she? I think so. I think so. Yeah, because they're for a long time. She wasn't even a part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're told that the uh, reunion is not set for a full series of pickups, but uh, it'll be either a one-time thing, a couple episodes, uh, and possibly a uh, documentary type of vibe, type of feel. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. So Snooki's coming back, right? Yeah. And they said they're going to PG-13 this thing? Uh, it just wouldn't be as crazy. It's kind of more the high, the focus of it would be kind of where they're at now and how the TV show has, you know, it's almost like, where are they now type of thing. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because, like, that was such an influential show, man. I mean, like, just, just right there, GTL, Jim Tan Laundry, dude. I remember, like, everybody was saying GTL, you know what I yeah. mean? And then, like, nobody said sex anymore. Everybody said smushing. You know, that was coined by <laughs> yeah. uh, by, the, by the snooksters. What did, she, what, did, what did she used to say? Like, yeah, we were smushing. Yeah, it's like, come on, let's go back <laughs> to my room. We can smush. Like, what? what? You know what I mean? I, I remember <laughs> when those guys came out. Like, I, I would... Not ashamed to say that I watched that TV show. Dude, I watched it all the time. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. In fact, dude, I think every group of friends had yeah. that one guy that kind of looked like Mike Sorrentino, the situation, and then yeah. eventually like, they would just call him the you know, snitch. You know what the I'm saying? Situation. Like, I'm, yeah, dude, I definitely had that friend. I, um, I'm curi- curious to check it out. I don't know if it'll be any any good, but, I mean, who knows? Dude, I, you know, I'll tell you what. I'm in. If you want to watch that, invite me over on a Friday night. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll pop some popcorn. You know, maybe maybe we'll warm the the what's that thing called the fire, uh, the, fire the fireplace the baby. fireplace. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We'll break out some wine and we'll have to do some. Uh, we'll have to break out some tequila shots in honor of. I'm down. You know, Jersey Shore. So uh, anyhow, moving on to other news. Uh, hopefully, my picks are going to be. That was a good pick, by the way. I don't know if I can yeah. top that one. <laughs> uh, let's see here. R. Kelly. Uh, he says he's denying abusive cult allegations. Um, Let's see here. There's been some explosive allegations that he's the mastermind behind an abusive cult that subjects women to sex slavery. That's crazy. It says a rep for the singer tells TMZ, uh, Mr. Robert Kelly is both alarmed and disturbed by the recent revelations attributed to him. Mr. Uh, Mr. Kelly unequivocally, equivocally, equivocally denies such accusations and will work diligently and forcibly to pursue his accusers and clear his name. Man, I, I need to go to speech therapy class because I, I I feel like um, yeah R Kelly like he had uh, you know hit songs and he had you know obviously all his legal problems, but I feel like he just can't get back on top. <laughs> yeah, you know? dude. Everybody seems to be well because he was dating that chick that was like fifteen or whatever. Yeah, he hooked um, up with like I Aaliyah, forgot. right? Was it was it Aaliyah? I, yeah, I think it was Aaliyah. Dude, isn't it the chick that died in a plane crash? Mm-hmm. So and she was underage. Hold up, so that's all the same chick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I don't think I realized that. I, I knew that he hooked up with a 15 year old, but I didn't realize 15 year old was Aaliyah. Yeah. Wow. Damn, that shows how uh, <laughs> how in tune I am with uh, celebrity news. Uh, Justin Timberlake, Rip Aaliyah, by the way, you had a good song, good couple songs. Uh-huh. Uh, so Justin Timberlake um, went to a golf uh, tournament and picked up some random baby. And do you remember the, like the Lion King where uh, Mufasa, or no, I'm sorry, it's Rafiki, the monkey, holds up Simba when he's born. He goes, ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a very uh, what do you call it? Like, I- iconic scene. Oh yeah, dude, it was like an iconic uh, you know film scene. You know, obviously, but uh, apparently Justin Timberlake walked up to some like random couple's baby and uh, pulled one of those on a golf tournament course. Whoa. So yeah, that's kind of awkward. Uh, let's see here. What's this guy? You remember Scott Disick? He was like part of that Kardashian uh, clan. He was like uh, the yeah. the former husband of. Uh, 
uh, what's her name? Courtney Kardashian, yeah. the one that you like? Yeah. And uh, so, anyways, apparently he was blabbing his mouth, telling the world that he boned this girl named Bella Thorne. And so now this says Bella Thorne sets record straight on Scott Disick. I was never with him sexually. That reminds me of Mr. Uh, Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that man. <laughs> well, I guess in that case it was different. But anyways, so there's that one. This one's going to be kind of funny. Do you remember uh, that one guy who's like, Show me the feeling of being lonely. Remember that yeah, one? Yeah, that was um, not the dude from, it was a uh, younger you- brother, right? Well, no, no, no. That was from the Backstreet Boy, Nick Carter. Okay. Which is, this has nothing to do with Nick Carter, but it has to do with his younger brother. And I, I couldn't think of any song. Oh, wait, no. He had that one song, Aaron Carter. What was his name? Uh, or the song goes, uh, I want candy. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. a good song. That was kind of catchy. Yeah, but I mean, that was like his only hit, and he stole it from somebody else. It was yeah. like a remake. Well, anyways, it says Aaron Carter was drunk driving no. and bombed the field so, uh, sobriety test. Uh, and that's what the cops are saying. This is kind of funny, I thought. Um, so it says Aaron Carter was spotted behind the wheel despite his claims before cops busted him. Uh, this is according to the police report. So it says TMZ obtained the report, which contradicts Aaron's claim that cops never saw him driving and therefore shouldn't have arrested him for a DUI refusal in Cornelia, Georgia. Uh, I thought this was kind of funny. So basically his publicist came back and said, uh, driving all over the road and running into the median in a white Chevy Suburban with no tags. He was saying that the uh, the car was swerving because it was out of alignment, not because he was drunk. Oh, geez, man. These guys will try anything to, to avoid, you know, the consequences of their actions. They'll yeah, make anything up. It's so stupid, and man. And he might actually get away with that, man. You think so? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, it, I... It's just so dumb the stuff that they try to pull, <laughs> dude. I think I think publicists are kind of like lawyers, man. I mean, no that's, shame. Yeah, that's their job. But I mean, realistically, the the alignment. Yeah, dude, that's so dumb. That kind of remind me of the one with the uh, what was that? Reese Witherspoon. Remember her, um, dude? You don't know Reese Witherspoon? Yeah, Sweet yeah, Alabama. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Blondie. Yeah, dude. And uh, what, she did a uh, was it uh, Cruel Intentions or whatever? Yeah. She played the, the innocent girl. Oh, she was hot back then. She was bad in that one. But dude, she got like a DUI out in Georgia. You know, a couple of years back. And it was funny because I went to a comedy club in L.A. one night and, and this comic was talking about uh, um, when when Reese Witherspoon got pulled over for a DUI. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, dude. It was so hilarious because the comic was talking about how everybody else in, in the United States was talking about, oh, poor Reese Witherspoon. Whatever, what happened to her? She's got a DUI yeah. now. That's, that's out of character. And <laughs> he was talking about how everybody in L.A. was pissed off because she's like, oh, no, Reese Witherspoon, what happened to you? You used to drive Mercedes and you got pulled over in a freaking Prius or yeah. whatever it was. So <laughs> it's like... It's like, whoa, dude, totally different ways of uh, looking at the same situation there. Uh, I thought this was kind of nuts. This was here, uh, local San Diego news. Uh, This is the third time a vehicle has driven into a house that sits on the bottom of a hill in Emerald Hills uh, neighborhood of San Diego. That's crazy, dude. So they just had the third vehicle. I guess these people are constantly being drunk driving through the hills. Yeah. And uh, they run off the road and crash into their house in the living room. Nuts. Man, that's dangerous, man. People die that way. I know, dude. So you got people like Aaron Carter drinking and driving, publicists trying to say, oh, it was the wheel alignment. And then you got people over here running to people's houses, man. It's crazy. Uh, this was kind of interesting. Um, I kind of feel like none of mine are going to top yours with the Jersey Shore thing, but in case anybody cares. He mixed just throwing them out, man. I, I am, dude. So San Diego could buy a South Bay motel uh, to house low-level criminals. I'm kind of curious. What do you think about that? So they're talking about... Uh, I mean, where is this place going to be at? This is, this is a Super 8 motel down in Chula Vista. Oh, really? Like. I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a stretch. Who's paying for that? Tax dollars. There you go. What do you think about that? I mean, you know, they're, they're, I guess they're, they're, their heads are in the right place. But like I said, realistically, I mean, it's a costly thing. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Would you, would you vote yes or no on prop pay for the criminal housing? Uh, Yeah. You would? Why not? Okay. Maybe, maybe it'll help rehab them. Uh, on to a little more crazier news. Uh, let's see. $1 million worth of marijuana discovered at uh, or inside 15 Mexican-built cars that were shipped to Ohio. Why Ohio? I don't know, dude, but that's kind of crazy, dude. These guys, these cartels are getting kind of creative. So they actually, they said a Ford dealership in Ohio discovered marijuana hidden inside 15 vehicles shipped from Mexico earlier this month. Worth about $1 million and roughly 400 pounds of marijuana. 
So much money. That's craziness. It says employees discovered roughly 30 pounds.